Hello, I'm State Representative Lynn Slaby from the 41st House District. Welcome to the Ohio In Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Charles Willoughby, and we are honored to have with us today Judge Lynn Slaby, who serves the 41st House District, which includes portions of Summit County. Thank you for joining us, Representative and Honorable Judge. <laughs> Charles, thank you for having me. I appreciate this. Well, um, thank you for coming, and we uh, now have you in the Ohio House, but let's talk a little bit about your background before becoming a state representative. Uh, I've been very fortunate in my life. I've had a uh, number of different positions. Uh, I just uh, recently retired from being judge on the 9th District Court of Appeals for 14 years. And before that, I was the elected county prosecutor for 14 years of Summit County. Uh, before that, I was actually in banking uh, and uh, thought I wanted to be a trust officer. And that's really why I won went to law school. But uh, my life took a turn and uh, ended up here uh, in the state house after I had to retire as a judge uh, in 09 because of age, unfortunately for me, uh, because I would have, I loved the job. It was a great job, but I'm really having a great time down here in the state house. Well, we're we're glad to have you here, and especially with that sort of background experience. Um, now, was the uh, judicial experience that you had what inspired you to become a representative? Or was there? No, actually, uh, the reason I was inspired to become a representative really started when I was a prosecuting attorney. I had the good fortune of being elected to the uh, State uh, Prosecutors uh, Attorneys Association presidency and uh, served there for uh, a year, a year and a half, actually, and then um, was also president of the Ohio Council of County Officials mm -hmm. and president of the Child Support Enforcement Agencies. Uh, during that time, it, uh, because of those positions, I had the opportunity to come down to the State House and testify a lot. And uh, really got fascinated with the dynamics and the process. Uh, then my wife was uh, appointed to the House in 2004. Uh, unfortunately, she uh, only served down here for about a year and was uh, defeated in that election. Uh, I thought, well, and when I retired, I sort of flunked retirement 101. Uh, so I needed something to do, and I thought, well, maybe I'd run against the person that defeated my wife. And I did, and I won. So uh, it was a nice turnaround. Well, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Um, has, has becoming a representative been what you've expected it to be after you got some experience here in the State House? Actually, it's a lot more dynamic. I think it's because of things that are happening with the dynamic governor, uh, the speaker Batchelder and I go clear back to the 70s. So uh, working with him has been a very, very enjoyable experience. Uh, but the dynamics right now, we are doing so many different things so fast. Uh, over 200 bills introduced in the first 100 days, uh, passing bills that uh, you know many thought could not get passed in the past. Uh, legislative sessions, um, and it's uh, it's it's been exciting. Uh, there, it's been a little bit of a different challenge that I had anticipated. Uh, speaker was fortunate enough uh, to make me as a freshman. Of course, most folks don't consider me a freshman, but it's sort of fun being a freshman again. Uh, made me chairman of uh, criminal justice. So being a chairman of a committee and serving on three other committees have, uh, has kept me busy, especially being on finance and appropriation. Well, you're uh, well suited for, for your chairmanship there on criminal justice, and uh, we're, we're glad to have that experience here in the Ohio House as well. Um, what sort of challenges or, or issues have you been able to work with um, or that are specifically facing your district? Well, I think the thing that faces my district is not much different than any other district. Obviously, uh, we need to have the economy grow. Uh, you know, small businesses are, are the future, I think, in, in my district. Uh, we have a very, very diversified district. The west side of Summit County, which I represent, is pretty rural. The north side of Summit County, which is the other part of my district, is sort of urban, at uh, tuned to the Cleveland uh, media market. But uh, having that diversity in the district, there are some differences on, on what the needs of townships are versus what the needs of cities are. So trying to balance that in a legislative process has been uh, a little bit of a challenge. But uh, the, the bottom line of it is 
that both areas, whether it be agricultural, rural, or more urban and industrial, uh, are dependent on small business start startups, uh, small businesses growing. Uh, we have a number of small businesses in Twinsburg, Macedonia, uh, Sagamore that uh, are growing that need to continue to grow and we need to continue to make a good economic uh, base in Ohio for job for businesses and of course it's businesses that create jobs. Well let, uh, let's go back to the, some of the legislation that you've worked on uh, regarding the economy or uh, the or the jobs in general in Ohio. Um, what are some of the legislation that you've worked on this year that you've gotten deeply involved with? Uh, probably the major piece of legislation is what's known as House Bill 86 which is a sentencing reform bill. Uh, it was first introduced into my committee, Criminal Justice. Uh, we worked it there. It ultimately passed the House and went over to the Senate. The Senate uh, Judiciary Committee has been working on it. Um, they've made some additional changes, uh, some amendments to the bill. Uh, I've been working with uh, Senator Grindel trying to make sure that uh, we're going to agree uh, when it comes back to the House, and I expect it to come back to the House uh, probably if not today, tomorrow, uh, and then I'll get to the floor either Thursday or next Tuesday, but it, hopefully this week it'll come back, it'll come back, and I'm assuming having talked to uh, Senator Grindel significantly a number of times uh, that I think we can pretty much agree on, on and concur, and that's sort of the process that goes back and forth between the two houses, and mm -hmm. hopefully everybody agrees or concurs in the end, and then it gets passed, uh, because there there's a lot of... Uh, dollars saved in the new sentencing bill that uh, are counted on in the, in the, bill, in the budget bill, 153. Yeah. So I think uh, we need to make sure that that gets done this week because we'd certainly like to get the budget bill out next week. Yeah, when you think of sentencing reform, you don't always think of cost savings or government efficiency, right. but that is really the uh, essence of that bill. Um, an initiative there? Yes, the, there's actually two important aspects of uh, the sentencing reform bill. The first aspect uh, is uh, that we're trying to move the fourth and fifth degree felons out of the penitentiary system and to reduce the uh, population. We're at 135 percent capacity. We need to reduce that population. Uh, very expensive to house uh, an individual in the penitentiary system. So part of the bill, one of the important parts that I see, is moving the first time nonviolent, non-sexual offenders out of the penitentiary into community-based correctional facilities where they can get treatment if it needs to be a drug and alcohol treatment, whether it need to be, needs to be mental health treatment and assistance, those type of things for first time nonviolent, non-sexual offenders. Move those out of the penitentiary system. Reserve the penitentiary for the really hard criminal, mm -hmm. the aggravated burglar, murders, robbers, rapists, and those things. Um, and, and it'll save uh, a significant amount of beds uh, in a period of over a period of a year, which uh, translates into a lot of dollars. Well, let's talk about two other bills that you've worked on with, uh, in some regard, to your judicial experience. Um, HDR one, which is uh, Joint Resolution one, and right. um, House Bill sixty three. Yeah. Uh, could you discuss those for us? Well, I, I liked HHR 1 because uh, it's a House resolution, joint resolution that uh, would increase the age uh, of a judge uh, having to retire from 70 uh, to 75. Uh, and I think that uh, it's time. It's, uh, it's in the Constitution, Ohio Constitution, that a person has, cannot take office after they turn uh, 70. Mm -hmm. And that was my situation. I turned 70 the year I should have run and but could not take my position again. Uh, I think uh, with longevity uh, increasing, with the, uh, uh, the, the health uh, that we see, I'll say, uh, more mature individuals uh, attain, uh, that uh, 70 is a little young uh, and maybe 90 is too old, so 75 was sort of a compromise that we looked at. And uh, I think, it, first of all, that it's a resolution that if adopted, it would still go to the voters for final approval to, because it's a constitutional change that has to take place. Okay. Uh, the other bill was a, what we call a, a, a bypass bill. Uh, it has to do with a, uh, an individual that uh, would enter into juvenile court who is pregnant, uh, wishes to have an abortion, and uh, does not want to tell her parents. Uh, the process that we had before uh, 
uh, was pretty much rubber stamped by the juvenile court judges mm -hmm. uh, without any real standards for which to review whether the individual had uh, really and truly understood the consequences of their act and the impact of the act. And secondly, did not, uh, there was no inquiry or very little inquiry as to any undue outflow outside influences. So what that bill did was set up a standard by which the judges in juvenile court can review the evidence and review the information that the juvenile has in order to make a very, very serious decision of whether or not to bypass their parent uh, with this information. Well, definitely some, uh, a very serious bill and both included in there um, are, are going to be important and I hope uh, that House Bill One, House Resolution One, does work th work its way through rather quickly. Well, um, as I as I did tell the uh, did tell the uh, session uh, and the members of the House that even if uh, the House Resolution passes and they increase the age, I've enjoyed my job down here in the State House so much. I don't think I'll go back to being a judge. <laughs> I, I'd like to stay here if the electors will keep me here. We'd like to have you here too. Well, thank you. Um, what committees do you serve on currently here in the House? Uh, besides the uh, Criminal Justice Committee, which I chair, I also serve on Finance and Appropriation, which was uh, a huge committee and very active and uh, continues to be uh, active uh, and will continue because we still have a capital budget to address later in the year. Uh, in addition to that, I sit on um, the subcommittee of higher education and deal with the higher education issues uh, throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, in addition to that, I serve on justice and ethics, which is somewhat the civil side of uh, the legal uh, issues that come before the House. So I'm really sit on the two committees, both the criminal side and the civil side of the issues that uh, come before the House. So it sort of keeps me busy. <laughs> it probably yeah. most, most likely keeps you busy. Yeah. Um, so I know that you stay busy. You have session, we have committee meetings, you have constituents and driving back and forth yeah. um, from the district. If you could describe a typical day at the State House for us. Well, I could start with a typical day such as today. Uh, I got up about five uh, to head, uh, drive down here this morning. I was down here by uh, a few minutes after eight o'clock. Um, looked at some of the mail that's on my desk, which stacked up uh, from Friday to Monday through Monday. Uh, got through part of it, looked at uh, some amendments that are on a couple of bills that we're working on. Mm -hmm. Uh, came over here to do this interview. From here I go to a press conference with uh, Attorney General DeWine. From there I go to uh, caucus, which is a, the Republican group that gets together before session. After caucus we go to session. Uh, once session is finished I have, uh, I have uh, three meetings scheduled after session uh, with uh, one, actually two of those were, are with other representatives. It'll last about a half hour each. And then the third one is from a uh, special interest group that wants to come down and talk to me about their concerns. Uh, then later on in the afternoon, we have uh, uh, I have a dinner uh, that I have to attend. And then this evening uh, at 7 o'clock, we have caucus again. Uh, and that'll run until about 9 o'clock. And then we start all over again tomorrow. A, uh, a tireless schedule, I'm sure. Yeah, but it's well, probably somewhat enjoyable, or at least parts of it. I, I didn't come down here to sit and read the newspaper. I came down <laughs> here to work and stay active, and, and that's one of the reasons I think I flunked Retirement 101. Uh, <laughs> I, can see. I found things to do to keep me busy, but it wasn't the type of life that I've been used to living, and uh, I, I needed a little. I consider this a structured life. Uh, now, some may not consider it structure because I'm bouncing from one one topic to another all sure. day long, but. Sure. Uh, that's what makes it enjoyable. If you could pick one thing you enjoy most about your job here as a state representative, what would that be? I think the most uh, enjoyable thing that I've found down here is actually working again with people. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, on the Court of Appeals for the Ninth District, I led, led a very monistic life, uh, did nothing but read and write uh, about the law all day long. Uh, so very few people came in and didn't even see attorneys except a couple of times a week uh, for oral arguments. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm back working with people and I enjoy working with people. Uh, and I enjoy working with uh, both sides of the aisle. Uh, I think I get along pretty well with them so far. And uh, what would be the best way for your constituents and other people to get a hold of you here in the office if they have ideas to share with you? Uh, there's a couple different ways they can get a hold of me. They can write me uh, down here. I get uh, my mail regularly, and even when we go on break next uh, for the next month or two, month and a half, I guess it is, mm -hmm. uh, I'll still be coming down and getting my mail and talking with folks. Uh, they can call the office uh, directly down here. I have a legislative assistant that uh, is just outstanding. And uh, she's very good about taking the messages and trying to get the return phone calls 
or responses, uh, or they can email me. So writing, calling, emailing, uh, all three ways are very relatively easy to get a hold of me. Great. I think we do have those, that information here on the screen with us today. Good. Judge Slaby, it's been a pleasure having you here today. I My really appreciate pleasure. you taking a few minutes out of your day. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>